What's up, Metalheads? My name's Jamie. This is the Blades and EDC channel. Thank you all so much for being here. If you're new, please consider subscribing. If you enjoy the video, hit that like button for me. It really helps the channel to grow and reach new people, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Today, we're going to take a look at a fantastic knife. It's just fantastic, guys. It really is. This is the Vostid Bellamy. I hate to do a review of it by knife, tell you how great it is, and then tell you it's sold out. Because it is sold out, and there was a special edition, a murdered out edition also that sold out. And But I think they're running more of these. Every, I've looked online, from what I can tell, and I'm, on Instagram, they are going to make more of these. So I would keep an eye out for one of these, because these are that good. Um, it's just fantastic in every way. Let's start with Ergos. Ergos are really good. Feel really good in hand. You're really locked in. This jumping from the front flipper locks your thumb in here. And the way they've done this micarta, if you look at the way they've cut in to the micarta here, it's kind of curved, right? It also feels like it's kind of angled towards the butt slightly. So when you grip this knife, it takes it's going to take a lot of pressure to slide forward on this. It's not uncomfortable. It's not sharp. It's just enough to give you traction where it's going to be difficult to move forward on the scale towards the cutting edge. It's really locking you in here very, very well. If I could make one request of this knife, I love a forward finger twirl. I feel like I have so much more control of a blade and a knife with a forward finger twirl. And with the way this twirl is done, there's not much. That, it's, it's very close to the plunge. And the cutting edge is like, I think, uh, three and a quarter. We'll verify that in a minute. Just make the cutting edge three, make this a full forward finger choil. Take that front flipper jipping down a little, just a little bit further on the blade to where if you were out here, your thumb would land up on it. Oh man, it'd be perfect for me. It'd be a perfect knife. It's great as it is. This is not a uh, complaint about the knife. I, I just look at this knife and I like it so much. I can see uh, possibilities for it. Really, 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 really like this knife a whole lot. Sad I missed it, so it's that good. Let's go over the specs. And I'm going to just take the specs for you because Vastid's uh, website says this knife overall length is 3.44 inches. And uh, that's not right. I don't know what's going on with their specifications over there, but we're going to just take it ourselves. That's all right. The knife is good enough to make up for the website mistake. All right. Overall length is right at eight inches, just a hair under eight inches, maybe seven, seven, eight, seven or 15 sixteenths. The blade length, overall length is exactly three and a half. The cutting edge is exactly, looks like at three and a quarter. So um, thickness of the handle and of the blade stock, the handle thickness, I'm gonna say right around a half an inch. Yeah, five, yeah, half an inch. And the blade thickness, I'm going to say around 120 thousandths from the looks of it. Oops, missed it. 122 thousandths back there. Up here it gets thinner, I can tell. 111 thousandths there. Down here. Oh, missed it. Let's get close to the tip here. It just gets smaller as it goes. 72 thousandths. I don't know if I can get behind the edge or not. It's a flat grind on the blade. Let's see if I can get behind the edge. Probably about 25 thousandths would be my guess. Maybe a little less than that. It's hard. I wear glasses. It's hard for me to get exactly on the edge of that blade like some of these guys can do. I do my best, but it's pretty thin behind the edge. Um, Flat grind, um, not clip point blade, I would say. That's what I would go with. What do they call it on the website? I don't know. Um, don't know, but this is M390, 60 to 62 HRC on the blade still. And the designer is U, that's Y-U-E. I, I think I'm gonna look up some more of his designs because I like this knife so much. I think I could, I honestly think I can pinky flick this knife. Well, not with this pinky. I can ring flick it, guaranteed, yes. Middle finger flick, that's the hardest one for me. It's hard for me to bend it, but yeah, I can get it. Index finger flick it. I don't know with my pinky being in a band-aid at the moment. 
Yeah, I can index finger flick it. I could picky flick this knife, I'm sure. I'm going to try it left-handed. Yeah, I can even do it left-handed. That's saying something, guys. For me, to be able to do that, that is really, really saying something to me. Um, the detent on this knife, it doesn't feel heavy. doesn't feel light. With, with a lot of uh, front flippers, they make it extra light, so it's easy to fail the flipper, right? Because you need a more stout detent for a flipper to work properly. I'm trying to fell this flipper right now with a light switch. Now you cannot push button this knife because of the way the front flipper is done. If you push button, the front flipper hits your finger. So there is no push button with this knife. No big deal, just light switch it. But on the light switch, try to fell it. Pull as lightly as I can. That I can't pull any lighter than that. And it just flies out. Same with the front flipper. It's just, let's see if I can fail the front flipper. I don't think I can fail it on either. Now I can sometimes miss it doing the knuckle roll just because it's a, uh, well, maybe I don't miss it. If my hands get sweaty, I miss it. But I don't have a very big callus built up there yet either. And I can definitely feel that jumping there to where on my thumb, I don't even feel the jumping. It's just comfortable as can be. So I think I'm a little more tender here and don't have the callus built up there. I'm sure the, you know, the knuckle roll works just as good as the rest. Um, let me give you some size comparisons. Let me give you some other front flippers first. Let's do the Migaron Vaso. A little bit bigger in the Vaso, not by too much though. Or the Sincut Bronte. Those are very, man, that thing, I need to clean it so bad. This is one of my work knives. I beat that crap out of it. Those are almost identical in size. Very neutral ergos in sun cut, but the ergos on this are better than that. Yeah, it's the micarta, the way they've done it. It's just made it very, very good. I don't think I've seen another knife with the micarta done like that. Let's do another front flipper here. Let's do the, uh, scent, the uh, Six Leaf SL11. Thinner than the SL11 and longer. Then we'll do... The uh, this variant PE2, quite a bit longer than the variant, but thinner and thicker than the variant. Well, actually, I don't think it is thicker. I think they're about the same thickness, but width-wise, the variant gets wider down here, which I think why I like it so much, because it locks my hand in so well with my hand size. If you got a larger hand, you make it out here, and I could see why you wouldn't like that knife. But for me, it's perfect. It really is perfect. All right, last comparison I'm going to do front flipper wise. It's the first front flipper flipper I ever owned, right? I didn't even know front flippers existed until I got this knife. This is the Kaiser Feist. And I actually won this knife uh, from Neve's Knives in one of his live streams. I picked the closest number, I think it was. Or it was a number, ran a random uh, comment generator. I don't remember, but I won this knife. And I got this knife. And this is near the beginning of me getting back into collecting knives, right? I used to collect knives late 2000, near 2010 and a little earlier, somewhere in that range, back when Kershaw was releasing a lot of their assisted opening knives that were very popular and uh, kind of got out of it, you know, had had kids, already had kids, but kids get older, kids get busier, and there's lots of things going on. So, you know, kind of got away from it for a while. And when I got this knife from Neves, I was watching his channel and uh, I'd seen a little front, a couple front flippers there, but never owned one, never felt one. This is the first one I ever got. And this knife um, cut me pretty good a couple times. Not too bad, just because of the length of it. I was trying to hold it up high right here to hit that front flipper. And when I would fell it, sometimes it would want to come back and get me in the palm. It got me in the palm a couple times. Nothing terrible. Now that I know more about it and how to handle it, you know, I I'd hold it much lower and... You know, I know what to do with it, but this is the one I learned to front flip on with it being so small, even for a medium sized hand with it being so small. I think it was a good one to learn on because it made a lot of these other ones feel so much easier to me. And, uh, you know, front flipping now, as most of you guys know, unless you're new here, it's my favorite deployment method. I like it more than any other method. And before 
in the last a year ago, I didn't know what a front flipper was, and now it's my favorite deployment method. All right, let's go ahead and do a couple other size comparisons of some other knives that aren't front flippers that you guys may recognize. The uh, QSP Penguin, the uh, Dimco AD 20.5. So it's longer than both those by quite a bit. Thickness wise, almost the same. And this one and this one in the width section is about the same. The AD 20.5 is a little wider. Actually, we'll leave that one out there for now. And we'll put this one away. And we'll do the uh, newly here on loan from Craig. This beautiful, beautiful Spiker Shaman, man. Man, with that Mars Valley cap fat carbon. I had Mars Valley fat carbon scales coming for my bug out. Oh, man, I can't wait. That thing looks so good. But anyway, this isn't about that knife. It's about this knife. Another front flipper, by the way. You can front flip a shaman, and I can front flip a shaman. You'll see in my shaman video. Um, what else we got here? Um, let's do a Spyderco Yojimbo 2. A lot of people know that knife, and we can recognize the size and the pinch made bug out. So it's a little longer than both of those. Not much longer than the Yojimbo 2. Quite a bit longer than the Bug Out. We'll go ahead and do a uh, pair of three, which most people know. And a full-size Kaiser Sheepdog. Which, by the way, if I didn't say it already, this knife is OEM by Kaiser. Which is why it has such good action. The action of this knife reminds me of the Kaiser Delorme. If you're familiar with how drop shutty the Delorme is, um, I don't know what they did different. A lot of Kaisers are pretty drop, drop shutty, but like the Delorme was like literally free fall. This one isn't quite free fall, but it's pretty damn close. And honestly, with a cleaning and a little bit of lube, it may come become completely free fall. I think it would. I think it just needs to be cleaned and lubed. But the action is just fantastic. This thing is a fidgeting monster. If you like to fidget with a knife, you're not going to find much better than this to fidget with. It's just good everywhere. Especially if you don't have my issues with the reverse flick. We'll just do it. Ring finger, left hand. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Love it, guys. Love it. If you can't tell already. And I think one of the stars of the show, not just the actions, just the way they did this micarta. The way they curled this micarta. Curved it right here towards the blade, away from the butt. And then they, they milled to where it's kind of, feels like the, they milled that this way. To make the micarta kind of angle back this way. And it just totally locks your hand on the, on the scale. It's great. Great, great, great. I hope if they do another version... Or do another drop. Maybe do another version similar to this. Put a forward finger choil in it. I would love to see that. Because I absolutely love this knife. Alright guys. If you got one of these, comment below. I did not get one of these when they dropped. I didn't like it the way it looked aesthetically, to be completely honest with you. Which is why I didn't get it. Now that I've had it in hand, I'm, I'm really regretting my decision. Because now that I've got it in hand, also I like the aesthetics. I would probably dye the micarta black. And... Uh, but the, the action, who cares what it looks like? The action's so good, who cares what it looks like? It's that good. All right, guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you guys on the next one.